we're live. It is Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. If memory serves, it is the 20th anniversary of the passage of the authorization for the use of military force, um, which uh, is a 20th anniversary that nobody celebrates uh, except Radiolab. Um, Wait, uh, really? It is 5.03 p.m. And we are here with Mike Pesca and an elephant in the room that we're just not going to address. Um, we're going to... Um, there's, is it a is it a blind elephant? Oh, is it? Are we all blind? And we'll just like touch the elephant without consent. Yeah, exactly. There's no the elephant is not. <laughs> no one ever asks about the elephant's consent uh, to be groped by blind people. Um, we are not allowed to have fun anymore, uh, but we are allowed to play Where's the Lie with Mike Pesca. And I have to say that when I uh, started creating the game Where's the Lie. Uh, which uh, I one of the people I imagined it for was Mike Pesca, because I think <laughs> like listening to Mike Pesca spin a yarn and having no idea if it's true or false uh, would be like one of the great pleasures of life, like a fine Chianti with uh, fava beans and somebody's liver. Um, <laughs> um, but oh, you know, do you know why they use that? Do you know why they use that as an example? Why? Because the most popular psycho, and here he is, Oliver. The <laughs> most. Oh. Act, <laughs> the most have popular. You, Scott, have you not met the naked cat? They're coming. No, I, I, I haven't. But I, I, I will say that um, it, it looked interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, according to uh, according to the DVD commentary track I watched. Those were, I guess you call counterindications, or those would counteract the effects of the most popular antipsychotic drug at the time, fava beans and Chianti. So it was a little bit of an inside joke as an antipsychotic uh, huh, interesting. Uh, recipe. Yes. Well, I, I, I got that in real time. <laughs> really? No. Um, <laughs> of course this not. Is, no, but this is, this is part of the where's the lie. That's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Are you, are you, fuck me, what? really, Mike? <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, like, I mean, I come on, no fava beans, cool. fava beans, ha has anybody ever heard of fava beans having antipsychotic properties, especially then paired with a wa red wine that goes with it? Apparently, the QAnon shaman was just mainlining fava beans. I just want to throw it <laughs> I, I was just going to say, how have I not fallen for one of the conspiracy theories? <laughs> like, I, all right. So gullible. So, um, <laughs> all right. So we're uh, uh, here with Mike Pesco. Let's remember uh, the rules of the game. And then we have an important announcement before we go into the game. Um, so the, the rules of the game are that Mike Pesca is going to tell a story. It's not going to be about Slate and his former co-workers. It's going to be about something else um, because that's the elephant in the room. We're not talking about that. Um, we're um, uh, we're going to uh, you're going to listen to the story. You're going to vote. You can vote any time about whether Pesca is lying. You can change your vote at any time. Here is one thing you cannot do. You cannot Google any facts um, uh, to check Pesca's story. If you do that, no one will know, except you will know in your heart that you <laughs> suck. And that's, you, you will just know that you suck. And there's no... There's no punishment, no, uh, you know, the hand of God is not going to come inscribe you not in the book of life as a result of this, but you will know that you were inscribed <laughs> in the book of people who suck. Uh, uh, after Mike is done with his story, we're going to bring on uh, some members of the audience who will today include Eve Goumont. Uh, and they will ask questions. We will ask questions. We will try to pin down Mike on the lie. Then you guys will vote again and we'll all reveal our beliefs about whether Mike is telling the truth or not. And then we will find out 
for sure. So that is the game. But before that, Mike has been off the air for what is it like now? Seven months? Seven, yeah. Do you we're feel not better or worse? Like has like having like not coming on in lieu of fun, do you feel like there's been this hole in your soul? Yeah, that's exactly how I describe <laughs> it. <laughs> Yawning, gaping maw. <laughs> so we are not gonna talk about that situation at all, except that we're going to give Mike an opportunity to uh, address it to whatever extent he wants to and make whatever announcement he feels like making about uh, his future activities. So, Mike, this part is not the game. We're going to presume that what you're saying is true. And Please so don't lie to me. people, if you vote that Mike is lying during this part of the show, um, you're, that's you wrong. Also suck. Yeah, right. you, you also, also suck. suck. And this, <laughs> and this one, and this one is a book of life deal. This one. Um, <laughs> so, very generally, I have settled with my former employee Slate. It was a long, shall we say, arduous at times process. But now the gist is mine. The gist shall be back. I call. I, we're calling it season two of the gist. The first seven years, consider that season one. <laughs> wow. in, your, in your same <laughs> podcast feed that you've always gotten the gist, it will be back. I don't know when. We have to do a few deals. I have to bu build a few studios. Studios being loosely defined as uh, converting the room that my cats used to play in to a proper studio <laughs> where I can invite Barack Obama over and we'll talk about <laughs> policy. But the gist will be back and I'll be doing it. I was going to say just as good, but, you know, I really think better than ever. And if you go to MikePesca.com and want to be notified when it's back, I'm not going to spam you. I'll just tell you when it's going to be back. Uh, all right. Um, I am uh, so excited. That is all we are going to say on the subject of the elephant in the room who lifts uh, his uh, trunk and waves it in our direction. Um, uh, uh, Let's Mike, play the game. The floor is yours for a yarn that is either true or false. I do want to point out that 78% of the audience thinks you're lying before you have even started uh -huh. telling your story. So, um, you know, you've got a burden of persuasion here. All right. Is, is it a yarn if it's true though, or is it like natural fiber hemp? Would it still be considered a yarn? I think it's still a yarn. It's true yarn? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so just in the- What do you think, Scott? You're a philosopher. Yeah, I, I, th by the way, that's just a, a good question. <laughs> you, you can tell he's a philosopher with that. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. How long, how many years did it take you to perfect that in your PhD? <laughs> I, 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 literally, it was six years of just that. You know, like, my advisor would say, again, and that, <laughs> it's a really good question. <laughs> it's a really good question. And, yeah. I tell that to my kids all the time. You know, you're asking all the right questions. You're asking all the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was born. Is this flammable? All I the right questions. All the right questions. <laughs> we really are, are hitting on important notes. So I was born on Long Island in a town called Oceanside. And if you know me well, you have determined I have already lied. Because I wasn't born in Oceanside, and I didn't grow up in Oceanside. <laughs> I grew up in Baldwin, which is the neighboring town. But the reason I never say that I'm from Baldwin is uh, my family had almost no association with Baldwin. We went to the Oceanside schools. If we met someone from Baldwin, we wouldn't ever know them. And if we met someone from Oceanside, we almost always would. We almost always would know them, yes. There are two associations I really had with anything going on in the civic life of Baldwin going up. One is that I was literally born in the driveway of the house my parents still live in. And we sometimes would see the ambulance that came and delivered me and they put storks on the side and I was the first stork. So that was a Baldwin connection. Wait, other... hang, hang on a second. You were born in the, you, you're skipping over <laughs> an, an important <laughs> subplot here. Not you even, were born in the yeah. driveway? You did. I was born, <laughs> I, was born in a, I was born in a Plymouth Barracuda in the driveway. So it didn't hit the ground. Gravel did not touch baby bottom. So, so by the way, we are hold going your by. questions on this subject. This We're, the oh, that's the, the elephant in the room. Yeah, we'll name we'll name him <laughs> Slate. Um, <laughs> anyway, okay. 
So two connections. One is I was literally delivered by the Baldwin Fire Department. The other was my dad would take his car to get fixed at a mechanic in Baldwin. I think it was called All Island Collision or All Island Auto Body, and it was a Baldwin-based place. My dad had, at this point, um, an 82 Corolla, and it would frequently need fixing. In fact, so frequently need fixing that at some point, um, you know, possibly around 1990, eh, maybe 86, he said, this is not a workable solution for me that I keep bringing it to this guy. I like my mechanic at All Island. He's this guy named Joe. He, you know, we talk, we, uh, my dad said, we talk, we have fun, but he's not fixing my car. And so he, th he thought he was going to go to another mechanic. That just pre prelude to one day we're in the Sizzler. I don't know if you know of the Sizzler. It is called a steakhouse, but it is, um, we're in the Sizzler and Joe, his mechanic shows up. He's like a clearly Italian looking guy, big thick mustache. And he says to me, Hey, how you like those fries? And I say, they're okay. And he takes them off. I'm like 12 at the time, takes them off the platter, slides them down. Put, oh yeah. He has a bag. I don't know. He has like a paper bag, puts the French fries in the bag, puts some salt in it, puts some pepper in it, shakes the bag, gives them back to me. How you like them now? I'm like, Oh, they're really good. Cause French fries with salt are better than without. So I'm like, I love that guy. I love that guy, Joe. Dad, you can't fire Joe. And my dad said to me, and I'll never forget this lesson. He said, you know, there's a difference between personality and character. And I know that he has a good personality, but I think he might be ripping me off with this car. I am going to take the car to another place because you pay to get your car fixed. You don't pay for, you know, French fry upgrades. And there it lay. I, I somehow um, I learned a lesson, perhaps. I, reflecting back, it's hard to separate from what's going to happen next. But this was my first uh, uh, inkling about a difference between personality and character. Mechanic Joe from All Island Collision. Cut to I'm in college. The I'm year gonna I go dox him right now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, wait, wait, you're not, but you're not Don't allowed use to. Google. Oh, no. Sorry, right. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Mechanic so Joe. So, yeah. I go, uh, I'm home for a, a college break. And this is I th maybe the first events took place when I was 12. So maybe these events take place when I'm a 20. I don't know, maybe it was 14, 19. But the big story, the big national story is one that you know of that summer of 92 was the Long Island Lolita. You remember this. Amy oh, my Fisher. God. Yeah. Yes. Amy Fisher. Amy and Fisher. Jerry read, right. I read all about it on Wikipedia. Yes. So <laughs> she's played by, depending on which movie of the week you see, either Alyssa Milano or... Um, um, Drew Barrymore. I don't know. That's a broad range for the you. Have to, I think you have to give like the really small like, explanation right. of what it was. A Long Island high school student is having an affair with this uh, with this guy, Joey Buttafuoco, and she shoots Joey's wife, Mary Jo <laughs> Buttafuoco, in the head. The bullet is oh, in Mary uh, Jo's head. Mary Jo, but not. But doesn't kill her. <laughs> No, no, and, no. That, and, that, and that, by the way, everybody, as Scott is now demonstrating, is funny. Yes. <laughs> I, just, I, I really, I just, I mean, you know, gun violence is not funny. Being shot in the head is not funny, but somehow that's funny. <laughs> there's, there's such a Buttafuoco-ism of Joey Buttafuoco. Dave Letterman makes 312 Joey Buttafuoco jokes, only to be uh, supplanted by Jeff Galuli jokes. Wait, so uh, can, 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 can we pause over this and say, yes. if Amy Fisher had been dating uh, Joey Smith right. would, and shot his wife, would the story have been a big deal? Or is it only a big deal because the guy's name was Joey Buttafugo? I think, but if, I think it would have been a uh, top story in Newsday, but it wouldn't have gotten bef uh, beyond I think that's the right. Bergen City. The Bergen I think that's record. right. I right? mean, like I think the fact that his Eastern name was a frickin' cultural stereotype right. had everything to do with why but, it was a national But story. also because that Mary Jo, I mean, she was, she was, you know, it didn't affect her cognition or anything. She would go on these talk shows, right? And, yes. and, yes. and, and give these she interviews. She was awesome, so, yes. Yeah, yeah I mean. It, didn't she stay with him? Maybe it, and, and then, you know, it affected her speech. So all of her interviews would be like this. And so it was like a constant reminder that the poor woman has a bullet in her brain. And then Amy Fisher became, became uh, the stuff of local legend. But one day you say, would it go beyond Long Island? It, it was a national story and it was uh, ubiquitous. 
And one day I'm looking at a picture of Joey Buttafuoco and I say, oh my God. Oh, you know, it's not just looking at a picture. It's there's a detail in the story that they met at his Long Island auto body shop in Shut Baldwin, the front New York. Door. No, that's true. That's yes. true. That's how... It's all true. <laughs> no, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. They met. Uh oh, I'm changing my vote. And sorry. I look at him and I'm like, that's the guy. Dad, Joey Buttafuoco <laughs> is Joe, your old mechanic. And he goes, no, no, no. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's what I just said. <laughs> I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't put all of that together. <gasps> this is what my dad says. He goes, no, but his name was Joe, not Joey. And he got <laughs> Which I pointed out, mustaches can change and wise can be dropped from the back of names. So, and you can make fries better with salt. Yes. <laughs> no matter. I was like 12 or 13 at the time. So, you know, he wanted to get in my good favor. Maybe he, I had some eighth grade classmates that he could, you know, take out on the town. So anyway, this like, oh, my God, Joey Buttafuoco. And then to my dad is like, I taught you the lesson of character versus personality based on <laughs> Joey Buttafuoco. That was the oh worst character God. in America. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ever want to learn that this isn't true. I completely agree. Don't <laughs> lie to me, man. Oh, no, don't oh. lie to me, man. I can't handle it. Not after learning about what happened with General Milley and the whole, like, we almost had a, like, a war with China today. It's, I'm, in, I'm fragile. So here's the thing. I'm going to, by the end of the story, you might not be so invested because I'll tell Wait, you that's what that's not the end of the story? No, no. So... I, at this point, have a Camry because from 82 to 92, the Pescas have upgraded from Corollas to Camry. And I have the old family Camry, and it's giving me trouble. And before I go back to school in the uh, fall, uh, we have to take it in. And I say, let's go to Joey Buttafuoco's place. He still is earning money. Maybe he's there. And my dad's like, well, I didn't go to the place for the, uh, you know, in the first place because I thought it was getting ripped off. But yes, this warrants a trip to Joey Buttafuoco's uh, auto robotics slash mechanic shop. <laughs> so we go there, um, we bring it in, we get out, and a guy comes from around the corner, a guy with a mustache, and it's Joe. It's our old mechanic Joe, who is not Joey Buttafuoco. <laughs> it's a different guy named Joe. Now I have to say, <laughs> that place literally is Joey Buttafuoco's place. We really were taking it to Island Auto Body corner of Merrick Road and I don't know, wherever the Coral House is, Milburn Avenue. You could check my Baldwin geography at this point. Okay, I'm going to make this story of life for you and just end it at the other <laughs> like, it, it, Yes, it, it is better if I just ended it with a lie. But what it tells me is that sometimes you get a life lesson about things like personality and character. And then the example that fleshes it out tells you it's so true you don't really have to think about and ponder it and for like two weeks that was the case but then it goes back to just a generalized <laughs> lesson that maybe doesn't have a clear and glaring example that takes, <laughs> takes away any you know any actual uh pondering of the morality of it so i guess that's my story for so two weeks minute, I... joey buttafuoco was my mechanic but it wasn't but i but i got a question about this <laughs> so at Joey Buttafuoco's auto body shop, yes, there was another guy another. named Joe. What are the who chances looked enough that like him? What are the chances that you could the confuse Italian him? Population of Long Island. The two Italians would be fixing cars, and they'd both be named Joes. By the way, my dad's <laughs> named Joe too, and he knows how to wrench a uh, you know pre-computerized car. Were they yeah, related? I don't think so. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good question. I didn't get into it with them. I don't remember getting into it with them. Oh my well, could it, wait. Oh, okay. It, 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 you, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to use up my question. Good. All right. Well, um, let, let, let's go into questions, Scott. Yeah. You you have three questions. Um. Uh. Wow. So one, um, one could be that's a good question, although it's not really a question. <laughs> I'm not going to use that one. Uh, <laughs> if you if you overuse it, it doesn't work. Um. Uh, but, but, um so. Um, how, how did you, uh, your, how does your dad, so your, your dad knows that Joey Botafuoco worked there, but it wasn't the Joe that you dealt with that time. Like, it was, like Joey Botafuoco owned or his family owned, I forget the name of it. It could be Total Island Auto Body or Island Auto Body. 
He absolutely owned it. We saw that in the paper. That's what got our gears spinning and maybe convincing ourselves that that was Joe. Oh, but, 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 then he, but then he then said um, that um, that wasn't Joey Buttafuoco that we dealt with. No, what happened was we both thought it was, and then we went in, and when we saw original Joe, non Buttafuoco Joe, we were like, okay, we were mistaken. Yeah. I, I say, okay, okay. I, 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 I really don't want this to be a lie, so... I mean, I mean, actually, want it to be a lie. I want, I want, the, I want the real genius to be that it really was Joey Buttafuoco, and the lie is that it's not. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. So, so do you have more questions, or should we go to Kate? Go to Kate, and well, let's go. You know, cause, right. uh, yeah. KK, um, the floor is yours. Okay, so, uh, so, um, what's her name? The the one who shot the Amy, Amy Fisher. Amy Fisher. Amy, Amy Fisher. Um, did you know her in high school? She went to, she went to, I think Merrick, one of the three Merrick high schools. I think, I think not the one that, um, not Calhoun high school, which is the one that, uh, Debbie Gibson went to. I think they went to different high schools, (laughs) but in the same district, Okay, (laughs) but not mine. (laughs) Um, how old were you when that happened? So 92, I was 20 and original lessons. I was like 12 or I don't know, somewhere probably 12, 13, 14. Okay. So there were like eight years between, between when your dad fired your mechanic and when you went back to see him. Right, right. Okay. I have one more question. A lot of salty French fries in between. So who's the real winner here? I'm going to, I'm gonna reserve my last question. So did did you have the, uh, uh, like, this story before Joey Buttafuoco, it must have made a big impression on you, the French fries, because you're like still talking about it with your dad eight years later when Joey Buttafuoco shows up. Like, why did this story hang around in the Pesca family collective consciousness for eight years? Okay, so now it's done the thing that memory does where it, it plants itself in a bigger meta narrative, which is the faux Buttafuoco narrative. But I think either before it wasn't that big a deal, though I kind of remember that there was this French fry mechanic guy, or maybe it was in whenever the distinction between character and personality came up. Maybe it was, but it, you know, it shifted from being embedded in one meta story. Oh, it's a story about character and, uh, and personality or another meta story. It's a story about Joey Buttafuoco. Scott. Okay. Um, I, 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 there's another clarifying question. So it's not like I'm not, but so was, did the Buttafuoco family own the, the, the body shop at the time that you learned the lesson, though that the Joe that was in it was not Joey Buttafuoco. Is that is that right or not? I think it was, yes, I think that's right. I think he, they owned it the whole time. I, let me think, might it be wrong? I just know in 92, it was announced they owned it and that was there since, you know, the 80s. So I think they owned it the whole time. Okay, so so this is like a Gettier problem. Do you know what the, the famous Gettier problem is? No, can I, Gettier can I, can we, Leonard? Oh, could, no, actually, can we talk about? Do you mind do you if have I just PowerPoint? like? No, I don't have PowerPoint. <laughs> but there's a, a Getty. There's a, a, probably the most famous um, counterexample, in or one of the fi- five top counterexamples in the history of philosophy. It was um, generated by this philosopher called Edward Gettier, um, who taught at Michigan State University and published a two-page paper. Um, in, I think, 1957. Um, this is the thing. So people said, up until 1957, I think it was 57, people thought that knowledge was true, justified belief. Okay? That's what it meant. To, so you know something, if it's true, if it's justified, you had a, evidence for it, and it was a belief. So a belief that's true and justified. Okay? But Gettier said there can be lots of examples of things that you believe that are true, justified, um, um, but in fact, or not, you don't know. So the examples that he gave were like, you're going, you're going in the train, you see a field, you see a statue of a, of a cow. And you think, oh, because you're at a distance, you think there's a cow in the field. Now, in fact, there is a cow in the field. It's just right behind the statue of the cow. But you don't know that. 
Okay, so you believe that there's a cow in the field. You're justified in believing there's a cow in the field. Um, uh, and it's true that there's true. a cow in the field, but you don't know that there's a cow in the field because you only saw a statue of the cow. I feel like the same thing is true here. I think that this Joe guy really was like hiding the true Joey Buttafuco. Um, <laughs> like where? And, and, yes. In his mustache? <laughs> so, no, no, in the sense of the following, is it true? I love okay? this. Okay. Is it true? This is clearly that, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it is true that you, um, you, uh, n you learned a life lesson from Joe. I'm trying to formulate the proposition, but like Joe at Badafuco's place or something uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. But in fact, it's like, I, I, look, you know, whatever, this is a live show. We're making it up as we go along. <laughs> Not everything always works out perfectly. Someone but in the you, chat's going to write out the syllogism. But yeah, I like, I like, <laughs> yeah. So I want to return to the birth in the driveway which seems to me like an under-discussed aspect of this story. I just want to know everything. Um, I don't even care yeah. if it's true or not. Um, we're not really <laughs> sure how it's connected to the rest of the story, yeah. but uh, you brought it up and therefore brought the question upon yourself. So my question is, what can you tell us about the circumstances of your birth in a driveway? Uh, three wise men came from Limbrook, actually. No, uh, there were... It was it was just a late reaction to labor pains based on that there was a false labor um, of a few days earlier or weeks earlier. I think that's I think I think that's the nice version. In family lore, there was uh, the statement, "Let's wait till halftime." But I looked at that. <laughs> I think I think that is inaccurate because it wasn't even on a Sunday. So, yeah. All right, I think that's uh, uh, about as good as we're going to get. I'll save Kate? my question for after the other two. Sometimes, All right. Sometimes people remember football being played when it's not there. Lou Reed used to say the day John F. Kennedy died, and he had a song about this, he was watching a Syracuse game, but then he looked back and there were no Syracuse games on the schedule. So somehow maybe football, births, deaths, but yeah, I, I have an experience like that with Barack Obama, actually. Um, uh, and um, it's very similar, um, except it doesn't involve Syracuse. Um, uh, all right, we have our two, uh, no, I don't want to change the subject, but I, I, I have a very clear memory of an interaction with the young Barack Obama when he was a newly elected senator, and it is simply impossible that it's real. <laughs> but, um, but it was... Uh, uh, absolutely Barack Obama, who was standing in front of me at the line in the Best Buy. And we had a conversation as dads um, back when he was a newly elected senator. Um, and uh, I am absolutely convinced it was him, even though it's totally impossible that it was him. Um, wow. And so I'm aware yeah. that my memory is wrong. And yet, like the football being played in uh, in Lou Reed's memory, uh, the Syracuse game, it's clearly my memory. Right, right. Um, and every time you replayed the memory, if you ever heard Malcolm Gladwell's uh, revisionist history based on Brian Williams, that's what memory is. It's just the replaying of the memory. Yes. So after 10 replayings, that's it. You're cooked. It was Barack Obama. Right. It yeah. was Barack Obama. And look, if I, if I had him in front of me, I would say... Uh, you know, this happened, and he would say, well, no, it didn't, and I wouldn't believe him. Um, Ev and Daniel, uh, in his proper native habitat, I might add, and Ev is back in her native habitat, which is in front of the blonde wood that looks like a sauna. Um, uh, you guys each have three questions, so uh, you can do it in whatever order you want. You want to go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, so I'll be the voice of the younger people here uh, and taking a question from uh, Paula. Uh, she asked what life was like in uh, the 90s, and I will uh, build on that and say, why is it such a big deal, this thing, like, for me? Like, I wasn't born in these days, so why is it such a big deal, like, Everyone seems to be like, wow, mind blown. I can, I, I will add to this and say, sorry. I'll add to this. Ben, can you, you're like, there's, I think there's, I think it's from, yeah, there you go. Um, 
I will. Uh, I used to ask my parents to tell me a story, and I would frame it as, "Can you tell me a story from the olden days?" So that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, I, 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 I'm sure my. Um, um, uh, Mike, I'm sure has a really good answer, but I also have a view about this. Go, go, but go ahead, Mike, because I do think like that that story was so powerful. Yes, I think it has to do with a lot of things. I think it was, you know, mostly because it was a time of material abundance and uh, the USSR had ceased to be an enemy. And so we could think and dwell on frickery. finally turn inward right. <laughs> on ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's Look right. At yeah. Long Island Lolitas and Lotharios. So they, you know, the media was much more centrally located in New York. This was a tabloid fodder that the Post loved, with alliterative names like the Long Island Lolita. The not just the name Buttafuoco, but the visual on Joey Buttafuoco. He's a striking man with a really robust head of hair, and people were just titillated with the details. And there was an iteration to the scandal: woman shot woman shot by a uh, husband's lover, husband's lover is in high school. Uh, you know, the, the husband is, most people saw the guy and said, that guy? <laughs> right, because he <laughs> was like really handsome, you can understand the whole thing, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. I just, wanna, I just wanna add to that, that there was a predecessor case to this in the early 80s which was, and Scott's eyes are gonna light up when I say this, cause he's from, do you remember Scarsdale diet doctor Herman Tarnhauer? What? I mean, <laughs> yes, of course. Right? I mean, that Shot. was a... <laughs> This yeah. was this huge. Right. So this was the sort of classy version of the Long Island Lolita case. Yeah, maybe case. there's something to like leafy suburbs actually dangerous. So this is in 92. The murder, rate in New, <laughs> the murder rate in New York City is literally its highest in 91. And so any stories that try to, you know, tabloid stories that make you think that no matter how safe you are, you're not safe, maybe those to get extra credibility. I, I, I would say, first of all, let, like, let me just re remind everyone, because we just had the 20th anniversary of 9-11, that like the big story right before 9-11 was Gary Condit um, and Chandra Levy, right? Where's and the body, a, Mr. Condit? Yeah, exactly. So, and 9-11 knocked that story off the, off the front page. So, so one thing is like when they're not like in less serious times, people look to these titillating um, um, kind of sex scandal type things um, you know, uh, there's like an affair, um, you know, older man, younger woman, the, the, and he there's wrote a, Harleys. Yeah, yeah there's Lorraine like a Bobbitt death. was around this time. Too. Right, Lorena Bombay. And also Trump, Donald Trump is and a central OJ. figure. Yeah, well, right. So there's OJ, but the, the, just the things that I think Ben and Mike will probably appreciate, of course, is that the Daily News, New York Post, um, what was the one on um, Newsday, Long Island Newsday? Like, like they were central. Uh, there were certain figures that were central um, characters, like the main characters. Like on Twitter, there were like the main characters in those in those tabloids, and and Donald Trump was a big part of that. Right. Um, and, and that kind of tawdry, um, tawdryness thing. So there's a there's there's a there's a way in which um, that that the uh, Trumps like. Uh, ri uh, rise, um, like he took that escalator, um, and it's the same. It is the same kind of um, uh, kind of tawdryness. Although he never, he actually didn't shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue, um, but there were all, of course, all these sex scandals associated with yeah. Trump too. And think um, about. So and, and at the time, we took unserious things rather seriously. Think about the last stanza of "We Didn't Start the Fire." Um, hypodermics on AIDS crack, Bernie gets hypodermics on the shore. He mixes in China's under martial law, rock and roll and cola wars, and he couldn't take it anymore. My point is, it's a mixture of the of the serious threat matrix and really nothing to worry about. Daniel, yeah, well said. Your uh, your first question. Um, what was the name of the body shop? That was that you've referenced. Either All Island Collision or All Island Auto Body. I can't remember. One of the two. 
and there's a chance I'm wrong about that, but it was on the corner of uh, Merrick Road in Milford. Mil and if you Milford. look it up on Google, you're, you suck. Cheating. <laughs> Ev? Um, so I can imagine that you weren't the only one uh, having reached this conclusion that maybe those two guys were the same. <laughs> Why didn't That's you true. ask? Like, it, who was I to ask? Was that? Have you, did you? You said no, no. You, you cut. You cut off. The joke, oh, like the the mechanic joke. Yeah, ask the question again. Why didn't you ask yeah. the mechanic Joe? Like, oh, like it's kind of. Why didn't you ask uh, Joe the mechanic? Like, oh, you like look look like this other guy who's pretty famous now. Uh, like what? Oh, what because. That when we finally saw him, it was in what? Joey Butterf. He really did work in Joey Butterfuco's <laughs> shop. So I didn't want to, I, I don't know. I didn't want to say, oh, we thought you were Joey Butterfuco. Um, I don't know. I guess we could have, and he would have had to take it in stride. But I guess we were all sotto voce about the fact that this was, this was adjacent to the big scandal of the moment. It was kind of like an elephant in the room, you might say. Daniel? Um, can you remind me what kind of how many years did this story take place yes. over in terms of the next? Unlike an elephant, I sometimes forget, but I think the m fired mechanic was around eighty four, five, or six, and it's definite that we visited the auto body shop in ninety two. Ev, your last question. Um, so I feel like this, this, is this story, um, has a good lesson at the, at the end of it. And it might be related like to something happening, like an elephant somewhere. Um, if you were to be inventing a story to have a good lesson, uh, would it be different from this one? Yes. I think what I would do is end with the, just end with never going to the auto body shop. Right. I think I'd end with, and that, and that mechanic was Joey Buttafuoco, and that shows there's a difference between personality and character. That's a real bow. Daniel, your last question. Were you able to walk to the body shop uh, from where you lived at the time? It is about point, it 0.7 miles from my home. In researching the story, I looked it up yesterday, 0.7 or 0.8, so you could. Oh, oh, by the way, yeah, my, this is totally irrelevant, but they would give my dad a loaner car when they were uh, fixing it. And as a 12 year old, I was fascinated with the idea of a loaner car. What if the loaner car is better than your car? Why would you ever take it back? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of questions that occur to a 12 year old. <laughs> All right, KK, Scott, we each have one more question. KK, you first. Um, did you ever end up meeting Joey Buttafuoco, knowing that he then was at that location, which was, you had an excuse to visit. I never met Joey Buttafuoco, no. Would have been good. Scott? By the way, Joey so Buttafuoco I, moved to California and was indicted for like fraud involving, you know. I was gonna uh, say that he was claims. like in a pornography or something. Well, but yeah, but he no, probably is, also did that. He but, did yeah. auto body fraud, yes. In a pornography? That, that, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like my great-grandma great would say that. <laughs> um, uh, um, I really, actually, you just stepped on it because I was going to say, if this truly happened to you, then you would have Googled him recently. What, have he, what has he done? But you just, you just, when's the last time you Googled him? Yesterday. In preparation for this. Oh, okay. That, I don't know that, which that's, way that. That's consistent that, with the rules. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's my last question. Um, is the auto body shop still there? I think so, but but I don't know. When I, you know, when I looked it up yesterday, it was across the street according to Google Maps, but. 
you know, I don't know if that's Google Maps inaccuracy. My memory's uh, inaccuracy. I don't know. But I know sort of Joey the, Joey has the four lost seasons Long total landscaping of Baldwin <laughs> Long Island. I would think it's more like Brigadoon. Maybe it only shows up once every 10 years to play in our memory. <laughs> All right. So we have come to the end. I think the audience is almost perfectly evenly split. What you have gone splits on these? I when I listen, it's usually close to even, right? Uh, the last one, I, I don't, the Godwin was completely even. Um, uh, most of the others, people think they're lying. Um, uh, um, so we have an almost perfectly even split, 32 no, votes. No, we, we all it's thought, ever, everyone thought that um, Tom Nichols was full of shit. Or no, was, was, sorry, no, they sorry. thought he was telling no, the truth. Telling the truth, and they, like, he was just completely full of shit, so yeah. Yeah, huh. so uh, the audience is split. Kate, what's your verdict? Uh, I think he, I think this happened. I don't think he's lying. Scott? I changed my vote. I think, I think it was Joey Buttafuoco, and he's lying that it wasn't Joey Buttafuoco, so I think he's <laughs> lying. Um, I have one reservation about it. Isn't that like if Tom it. lied that it wasn't, like if there was a famous person, like if Owen Wilson was in his class, you don't lie and say it wasn't Owen Wilson. No, no we, that wasn't but, Tom's, that was that Godwin. Was, that no. was Godwin. That was Godwin. Godwin. Tom's was in retrospect quite a triumph because yeah. his story was about trying to high five Bob Dole. Yeah. And we all <laughs> went for it. We should do. We all thought that he went. Should put together like a moth storytelling of all the spot the lies where I know Owen They're Wilson really high fives Bob Dole and gives someone a haircut. <laughs> and I'm super embarrassed in retrospect about the Jonathan Roush thing because I it occurred to me that there's no way he would have gone through the process of trying to persuade the Atlantic to hire him a prostitute um, in, in Vegas without talking to me. Like, we talk about the stories he's working on. And I'm listening to this and I'm like, oh, that sounds really, this is very plausible. That's the yeah. way the Atlantic's editorial process yeah. works. I, I never stopped and said, wait a minute, I would have known about this if you were working on this. And what if he said beforehand, and to get in the mood, should I watch a pornography? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so I just want to give my verdict, um, and we got to get the verdicts from from Ave and and, uh, and Daniel. Um, uh, uh, I also my reservation about this story is that I think if it had really happened, um, uh, we would like you'd know if this thing was still there. You'd, every time you drive by it, you'd be like, that's the place where Joey Buttafuoco, and it strikes me as a little bit implausible that uh, you don't know whether Joey Buttafuoco's place That it hasn't been is... recast. That said, I also think if you were lying, you would have met Joey Buttafuoco in the story. And the mm. fact that, that that your Joey, who you thought was Joey Buttafuoco, isn't Joey Buttafuoco, is makes the story a little bit less good in a way that uh, uh, undermines the idea of a lie. So I'm going to go with true, but with an asterisk. Ave, what's your judgment? I'm with Scott. Um, I think that the real story is, yeah, like Joey and Joe. Joey and Joe was the same person. All right. Daniel, your judgment? So I was surprised you didn't learn the name of the body shop from Googling it yesterday, but you knew the mileage on how long it would take <laughs> you. So I think it's a lie. Whoa, that's an interesting analysis. I'm 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 impressed by that. All right, Mike, the big reveal. The big reveal is that the cow was behind the cow. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 all a lie. There are two Whoa. true things. There are two so true that's things. That's not in the cow story. behind the. the yeah, yeah, this is. Yeah, this is. So, don't take the cow analogy from me. Also, <laughs> the cow <laughs> behind the cow was fake meat. The, the, it's all a lie. There are two true elements in the story. One is. My dad had a mechanic who he didn't want anymore, who once made us French fries in a paper bag. 
and Joey Buttafuoco's auto body shop is 0.7 miles from my home. And I can't remember. I don't know if it's there based on Google Maps today. But every time I would pass it, I would say, oh, that's Joey Buttafuoco's auto body shop. But we never did business there. We didn't have a mechanic oh. named Joe. Joey Buttafuoco is not involved except for having this business nearby. My friends are sociopaths. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I hate Whoa. this game. This is so <laughs> Yeah, I. <laughs> wow. All right. So, did you think you were going to get away with this? As a n- notice that uh, in the last few minutes, the uh, vote shifted in your favor. So, you are. Uh, you actually stumped the audience. You went from 80% saying you were lying to. Uh, 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 55% saying you were telling the truth. So your earnestness and uh, Long Island cheer and intimacy with the subject um, uh, caused you to flip votes in the wrong direction. Can, um, I, can I ask, can I ask, like, how did you think this up? I don't, that's a good question. I don't exactly know, but I know that everyone uh, that I heard telling these stories frequently would have a brush with fame. And I remember the old uh, Letterman bit called, I think, uh, Brushes with Fame. And then someone would tell a very anodyne story. Yeah. And then underneath it, it, it would flash writer's embellishment. <laughs> what a fruit though, went to the back of the car and took out a tire iron and began to do a little dance on my head. You know? Right, I think it was Brushes with Greatness now, right? Brushes um, could have been, but y- yeah. the, I do think that the thing, the hook that I got you with, Ben, was exactly the trap that I baited in that it's a good story before I let a lot of air out of the balloon. And yes. then if it were me trying to discern it was a lie, you would say, that's not what a liar would do. A liar would want to end on the most amazing note, not the deflated note. So that's why I went with that. Yeah, right. So, like, so, for, like, for example... Uh, if you were telling the story, and I know you're not talking about this because it's the elephant in the room, but you know, if you were making up the story um, of your interactions with your former employer, you would presumably actually have said the word. Mm. Yeah. Um, for example. <laughs> for example. <laughs> yep. uh, in a slap. Um, can I just say, but this is like, uh, but you are right that this is the cow behind the cow, which is that um, it is so. So, like, I thought it was a lie. So I, I believed it was a lie. It was true that it was a lie. I was justified in believing it was a lie for the reasons that Ben mentioned, which was that you let air out of the story, and yet I didn't know it was a lie. Yeah. That's yeah. good. It's the yeah. cow behind the cow statue. I mean, yeah, the way, exactly. the way, so I, I have hosted Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and there's that segment on the show where they play a version of this game. And I can always, I bet most of our discerning listeners do this too, but the lies are, the lies just adhere to fiction, the tropes of fiction a bit too much. They just nail the landing beautifully. They just have these little grace note details that are really only there in a work of fiction. Now the true story will have fun elements to it, but usually it will be the writer's craft that elevates it to, oh, that was so, there'll be something interesting to it, but then the writer will elevate it to something so uh, amazing, whereas the lie stories will often, you know, even without the writer bringing his or her own um, writerly craft to it, will seem so amazing. David Botts, you uh, have a uh, comment uh, for the guest. My, you just muted him. Whoop. You just muted him. Start over again, Mr. Botts. Mike, it is super good to see you. Uh, and I wonder where the cat is. And Mike, I, uh, I don't have, I don't have a question. I have a comment. Yes. We miss you. Thank Mike, you, we miss you. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. You're awesome. Nice to see you, David. I can I ask? I have I have a co- I have a comment, not a question. Tell me the story that you referenced in from New Jersey about the doctor something that I've never heard this story. I've never heard that person's name before. That happened in the eighties. Oh, oh, the, the uh, Scarsdale diet doctor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Herman Scarsdale. Tar- 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 
Herman Tarnhauer uh, was a prominent uh, uh, weight loss doctor, and he was having an affair with the headmistress of a uh, of a elite girls' school. I don't remember what her name was, though. I believe she um, uh, uh, she ran Breerly or Madeira. I forget which which of the schools. And uh, he broke up with her, and she shot him to death, and went to prison for the rest of her life. Thank um, you for the wiki hole. I'm gonna go uh, do that like as soon as I leave here. <laughs> he was he was the um, he was Gene the author. Harris. Gene, Gene Harris, Harris. Right. right. She right. was the author of the. Um, the Scarsdale diet, um, uh, and oh! hence, when whenever his, oh. uh, whenever the subject would come up, it was like, uh, it was like appended to his name, Scarsdale diet doctor Herman Tarnauer. It was like all one <laughs> word, um, and, you know, like ousted Haitian president Jean Bertrand Aristide right, right. was another one that was like that. Right. And for a while, kind of and, Indian strong man, yeah. And for a while, it was, uh, you know, Barney Frank, who was an admitted homosexual um, back when, <laughs> when, like, being the only out member of, of right. Congress was, like, something that had to be an appended to your name as though it were all one word. Uh, Scarsdale Diet Doctor Herman Tanhauer, um, uh killed by Jean Harris, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I think she died a few years ago in prison. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, the you know other what? story. Her, B, her she, BMI was wonderful. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and her car uh, maintenance, the, the auto body shop that she ran. I'll give was... you another one of, of that ilk. Do you remember? And Dan Clore has made a documentary about it. The woman who threw, the man who hired yes, someone to I was throw just going to bring this up. Of no, not bleach. It was acid. Acid, and, and they <clears throat> got together. And they yeah, to and he off. went to yeah. jail for it. Yeah. And then when he finally got out of jail, she was like partially blind and he came back to her yep. and like had a relationship with her and cared for her while she was like for the rest of her life like while she was like horribly mutilated from this acid damage i completely yeah i remember that There's that was crazy there is something that, about I, these stories yeah yeah well, there was also that famous thing which was I, I think stolen by david fincher for seven but there was this beautiful um model whose face was carved up with a razor by, do you remember this? Um, uh, um, was carved up by a razor. Um, uh, uh, Hanson. Um, he, he, this was like a huge scandal by a by an aggrieved lover. Um, oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know what? At this point, I really hope that's true um, because <laughs> everyone's like looking at me like like I'm like imagining yeah. this, and, and if I am imagining it. Can you send somebody to New Haven? <laughs> because this is scary. Um, well, and there, uh, and there were, uh, and these were only the fun stories because there was a variant of this type of story that was super racially charged and yeah, yeah. and actually scary or as hell. The, or, the, 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 the two really famous deadly. ones are the Central Park Five, which of course Donald Trump played a significant role in, yeah. um, and uh, the Bernie Getz uh, story, um, and these were had the same kind of sensational qualities and tabloid uh, excitement, but they weren't right. they weren't like they weren't fun in the same way right. that I mean Joey Buttafuoco yeah. was a fun story. Right. Well, <laughs> The one you mentioned, we mentioned Lorena Bobbitt, we should reclassify that as not a fun story. I mean, this is like a habitually abused woman who's kind of heroic, I mean, in, in, in her way on the media did a good piece on that. Yeah, this is also one of my favorite genres. You know that tabloid story where everyone thought one thing? If you dig deeper, it's quite a bit different. You know what? That genre is much, much less popular than it used to be. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's what really the good. Kitty Genovese story is the classic example of this. Right. Where, yeah, where, where, where it's actually, it, it's important whether, whether it's that it's not true because people, I mean, the, the basic, basic theory behind it. Oh yeah, um, yes. This is the yeah. one that the woman's the woman's screaming and screaming, and they say everyone says they heard her, and no one went to help her, yeah. and she was murdered. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But that and that also, as we know now, has uh, an, an LGBT angle because Kitty was uh, lesbian, and right. we also know that 
you know, my friend Jimmy Solomon did a James Solomon did a very good documentary about about that. that so wait, that's that. been proven as not being true, true of the like Kitty Genovese story. I didn't know that. Yeah, people came to her aid. Oh, yes. they did. Oh, yes, yes. they did. Yes. Yes. Yeah, people re people responded multiple times actually um, um, uh, uh, to it. Um, but you know, kind of the idea behind it is like when you have um, a large group of people, um, getting people to act responsibly is often difficult. Um, but see climate um, change. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. By the way, the name of the person is Marla Hansen. Oh yeah, Marla, Marla Hansen. Hansen. Right. I do right. remember that name. Yep. Yeah, so Mar yeah, Marla Hansen, so she was in a dispute with her landlord over a secured deposit. He came in and he carved up her face with a razor blade. Um, like and so it was, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like the definition of psychosis is somebody doing that. But, that, but, but uh, you know, um, um, anyway, yeah. How is she ever going to make rent now? Idiot. Do you, do you know, wait, hold on one second. I know you want to end the show, but do you know the, the McDonald's story? Like the McDonald's, McDonald's coffee story is that story. Oh yeah. Oh, that's that really. Yeah. That's, no, it's, it's not total, true. It's, it's total, total bullshit. Like she actually, oh. like, like the water was heated to like 280 degrees or something absolutely insane. Uh -huh. The coffee was, and when she poured it on herself, it act like it took. She was like in the hospital for three weeks, and she had was, multiple skin grafts, and it was yeah. actually terrible. Uh -huh. And it was made to sound like here is this like eggshell like mm -hmm. eggshell skull like kind of plaintiff and like can you believe now we have to have warnings on coffee and it actually was a really great example of a tort case of like yeah, making that, making a broad policy change wow that's great that's amazing wow so the yeah. moral of that story is <laughs> I made it. Joey Buttafuoco was a wronged gentleman, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, just misunderstood um, by all the people in his life, and um, uh, and and we should all uh, revisit his plight. Mike Pesca, you're a great American. It's great to have you back. We are looking forward to the return of the gist. We will be back tomorrow. Who's our guest tomorrow, KK? I don't, I don't think we I don't have think we know. No, 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 we, 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 do. Sam, we do. Oh, Sam, Sam. Sam Moyne. Sam, oh, Moyne, Sam. Is new Sam Moyne is coming on I've to never respond to the outrageous attacks on him uh, <laughs> in uh, the that That's publication another. that will shall not be named by anybody Twitter? associated by lawfare. Um, uh, just security. So, so, just, wait, just, yeah, just just security wrote a very hard hitting um, uh, um, critique, I think called the humanity of Michael Ratner and the, fa the fabrications of Sam Moyne. So we want to talk about, uh, maybe talk about that, but I, I, but we just want to talk about- I've Sam's never heard of that book. rag. So like- Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a you know, thir third rate hysterical uh, uh, hard right publication. Um, <laughs> Uh, the elephant in the room, uh, uh, you are also a great American, um, and we will be back 22 hours and 59 minutes from now. And until then, Mike? We can't have fun anymore, but in lieu of fun, what, how's it end? However you want it to. <laughs> but, but in lieu of fun, but in lieu of fun, remember the 90s, fondly. The, yeah. the 90s. Yes. The 90s were the worst. All right. <laughs> See you tomorrow. There was a murder raid in New York. What was it? Like Three thousand people a year. It was delicious. Pop rocks yeah. and coke. All of it. I yeah. found a dead body on the way to school once in New York, but that was in the early 80s, it's your not in the 90s. Own fault for walking that way. They, they yeah. left it on the, <laughs> right. the 90s. Let's, 